probably the best advice I could give beginners. You don't have to be worried about the weights you use in terms of what people are looking at you and thinking about. Oh my God, they're going to be looking at you. No one cares about you, bro. No one cares. Drop the weight. So I've got a couple of random gym tips that I feel like most people should know, or pretty much everyone should know about, but especially if you're a beginner. I've been thinking of these random tips over the last few days, and a few of them are actually quite good for people who've been going to the gym anyway for like years, so you might find some benefit. Grab your iPhone if you do use one. If you use an Android, just leave. Uh, scroll up or down if you're not broke and you've got one of the newer ones. Put on the do not disturb feature and then also put your phone on silent. Any notification, any call, any anything that happens on your phone will not give you a, an alert unless you actually look at your phone. So nothing will make a noise at all. Very important to stay in the zone in my opinion. Um, getting a call or a text or a message from a friend and you replying it is pretty bad in the gym in my opinion. Imagine your first exercise being squats and halfway through you get like a text from someone and you've read it and you're like, oh fuck, I've got to reply. And like, you know, then you choose not to reply, but then you've just taken yourself out of the momentum that you were in. So I would personally suggest to just do this at least while you're in the gym. Personally, I keep the do not disturb feature and the silent mode on literally 24 seven. If for example, you're doing slow cardio, um, not hit, not high intensity, I, whatever the fuck that hit thing is. If you're doing kind of slow cardio and you're doing it for like consistent fat loss, obviously stick a YouTube video on. I prefer to do that and I feel like that actually makes the cardio a bit more worthwhile. So throughout the week, I'll be, obviously I'll just go on YouTube quite a lot, but I'll see quite a lot of videos that I don't really feel like watching there and then. I'll literally just save it to my watch later. And then when I'm doing it quite a long cardio session, I'll just pull all these uh, videos out and just watch them all. I kind of look forward to it now as well. So maybe if you kind of enjoy watching YouTube videos, a simple tip is literally just watch them while doing slow cardio. Now, specifically for weightlifting, we only get to have like a minute to three minute rest breaks. So this is my advice is, my advice is to not waste those rest breaks in a distracted world. Don't be scrolling on Instagram, don't be on YouTube, don't be replying to messages. There's no one who's that important above your health. No message is ever worth more than your health. And you are, although you're still improving your health by being in the gym, but it is a detriment to your performance. And a detriment to your performance is technically a detriment to your health. So don't detriment your health by just fucking up your gym session, just being sat there on, on your phone scrolling away. So in my opinion, the only time you should really be using your phone in the gym, apart from if what I've just said, is um, just to change a song. So I do that quite often. Maybe the song that's currently on isn't that great, so you change it up to a more of a pump one. But that actually brings me to the next tip, which is to make a pump playlist. Let me ask you a question right now. What is your three biggest pump songs? If you can't name me three, then you haven't experimented with this enough, but that's okay because you can start doing that now. Start listening to songs in the gym, especially find the ones that don't just, that you simply, you know, just like listening to. The purpose of these songs is to make your performance in the gym better. That you've got to use, use these as a tool. It's not just listening to music for fun in the gym. It should be listening to music, which pumps you up, which makes you get the extra rep, which pushes you a little bit harder. The music I've generally listened to my entire um, lifting career, like six years I've been lifting, has just been kind of like aggressive rap and sort of rock and metal. So everything that's got a, a aggressive, violent theme to it, so specifically drill, like UK drill is literally all about stabbing people. And I really like listening to those songs. The lyrics and the beat gets me pumped up and I'm like pushing myself harder. I'm, I can feel the testosterone rising when I listen to that music. I can literally feel it getting released into my blood. And you should find songs that do that for you. Do you have a song that you listen to and it reminds you of a person, a place, a time, food, whatever, it reminds you of something? You probably do, most people do. This is just called association. We've learned this in psychology and it's just basic stuff where we associate something with something. So you've associated this song with, for example, imagine this song that's just kept on getting played when you went on a holiday. So for me, it was like happy by Pharrell Williams or whoever it was when I went to Paris like 
years ago but that's the song that she kept on getting played so anytime I, I listen to that song anytime it's played now it reminds me of Paris couples say that they've got caught songs together it's like an, a song that through association the one of the you know the partners will hear it and instantly think of their partner we can use this to our advantage this is kind of like psychological tricks there's certain songs that you can or any song that you can get a an association built up between the song and good performance whilst exercising in the gym. So this is why I say to make a playlist. This is why I call this random tips because this is so, so random that no one's ever gonna tell you these tips before. Make this playlist, but don't listen to it on shuffle. Listen to it in the exact order from the top to the bottom and put you know, the songs that you feel should be at the top, whatever way you wanna structure it out. As long as you don't listen to this playlist and these particular songs, much else outside of the gym when you play this playlist every single time you go to the gym every time you go to the gym you just press start from the top song and it just goes down tomorrow you go to the gym start from the top song goes down i can guarantee you guys this i've been doing this for years the times that i don't want to go to the gym do you know what my secret tactic is to make sure that i go to the gym almost every single day that my secret tactic is literally just to play my actual um my playlist here so i've literally got a playlist called songs about stabbing people to listen to on your way to your nine to five job it's just drill songs there's certain songs that just for some reason make us feel high performance in the gym so i could potentially be thinking about skipping the gym a certain day and a lot of the times when i get that thought and i kind of feel a bit lazy i literally just play my pump playlist and i swear to god within 30 seconds i feel myself sweating i feel myself like do you know that, that feeling of a beast workout in the gym where you're pushing and you're like just as soon as I play one of these playlists I, I start feeling my skin like react to it I feel like testosterone getting released I swear to god you can feel that shit because I do and so times that I don't want to go to the gym I put this playlist in I'm, I'm in the gym within 20 minutes and I was going to skip that day is it still recording yeah how long are we going? Okay, right, so far this has been quite technical stuff, but there's another thing related to this playlist stuff, is get some Bluetooth earphones. So these are like fake AirPods. They were like a few pounds on Wish or some shit. It took like weeks to get here. The quality is kind of shit, but they're Bluetooth and they work pretty decently. So I've got them here. Pretty sure they look like normal AirPods as well. I'm not going to put a link. Just go find them yourself or just buy some ones that are like... Um, just any Bluetooth earphones like this. this. This shit pisses me off, I don't know about anyone else. So when I'm in the gym, there's certain workouts that these earphones really do annoy me with. So I'll listen to them like this, right? Now when this is connected to my phone with a couple of exercises, it's kind of really annoying. I can really feel it like just kind of tugging and like this shit just pulls all the time. So I got these Bluetooth ones to, just to kind of put on when I do uh, cardio and when I do um, ab training. And so far I use them quite often. I still use my my full iPhone ones, but I'd suggest it just getting a quite cheap pair of Bluetooth earphones. Nothing too expensive. Put them on when you're doing like cardio and abs and certain exercises that earphones really annoy you with. Linking all of this so far what i've spoke about has been kind of like music so far i honestly really do think music is a big part of my performance in the gym and i feel like if anyone tells me music isn't that important i feel like it's just because you haven't found the right songs yet there are some songs that pump me up and i swear that everyone should have songs like that and finding those songs finding that genre changed lifting like going to the gym for me forever because i didn't really enjoy going i never used to get pumped or anything till i found the type of music that i liked and then i like i started going to the gym for fun it was like i was going for the pump instead and the pump was in line like pump equals the type of music i was listening to that's how much i really do think it, it matters fully moving away from talking about sort of iphone and technical tips there's a few different ones that i feel like everyone needs to drill into their minds. As a beginner who's just about starting in the gym and exercising in general, there's two things that I want you to lower. Your ego and the weights that you use. Worldwide belief of people being insecure to go to the gym because they feel that everyone is watching them. And a lot of people, when you know they say this on Reddit or social media, people reply and say like nice things and, oh, you know, I'm gonna take a more of a, 
aggressive approach to this and kind of almost sound offensive and rude, but I'll get my point across. Who do you think you are? Like, I mean that in a kind of offensive way. Like, who the, who are, who the, who are you? Who the fuck are you? Honestly, like, who, you're not that important to me. In the gym, you're not important to anyone. You aren't important, right? You need to understand this because people care too much, but they, people don't care about you. They only ever care about themselves. So let me ask you that question again. Who are you? I don't know you. Everyone in the gym doesn't know you. You know how before you entered the gym, you had your whole life, your whole memories and history and journey up to that point, and that's what you're thinking about in the gym and you're, you're being insecure and thinking about stuff. That's what everyone feels like. You need to drop your ego because you need to understand that you're not important. No one gives a shit about you and no one specifically gives a shit about you in the gym and they're like, no one, do you know what I mean? It's not like all of the advanced gym goers have like a group chat and they're like, oh my God, do you know uh, Sarah, do you know the blue top that she came in today? Or do you know what I mean? Or do you know she was using six kilogram, she was using really light dumbbells. Like we don't talk like that. All right, and that this brings me, oh, it's to the same point where I said drop your, the weights that you use and your ego, I feel like are in line with each other. And I'm, I'm embarrassed and I'm sick and tired of seeing a lot of the, the majority of beginners with this attitude that first of all, they think they're so important that everyone is watching them. Because they think that everyone is watching them, they've got a bit of insecurity and ego that they need to be lifting a at least moderate weight. They do understand that we know that they're a beginner, so we don't expect you to be lifting heavy. But for some reason, a lot of beginners will just come and just use weights that's too high because of this idea that everyone is looking at them. So now do you get why I included both of these together? I feel like they're in line with each other. Probably the best advice I could give beginners is literally just understand that no one cares about you. You don't have to be worried about the weights you use in terms of what people are looking at you and thinking about. The weights you use should be completely different to that. It should be the weights that your muscle can actually lift properly without breaking your form, without using shitty momentum and like just flaring your elbows and doing this weird shit that I see beginners do because you're using too high weight and you're using too high weight because you've got some kind of ego where you think you're so important that I'm going to be disturbing my workout by judging you. No one in there is judging you. Like I want to get quite pissed off at this because everyone seems to think like everyone in the gym is so aggressively and they're, oh my God, they're going to be looking at you. No one cares about you, bro. No one cares. Drop the weight. But all of this stems from what they think other people in the gym are looking at, right? So I'll tell you what we're looking at as someone who's been going to the gym for for years time. If I see there's two beginners, there's a beginner who is got an ego. He thinks everyone's looking at him. So he's increased the weight and he's using like 16 kilogram dumbbells for bicep curls. And bearing in mind, I've been lifting for like six years and I use maybe, I grab the eights sometimes. I grab the tens and the twelves. I probably never use the fourteens. But about three, four years ago, I used to grab the twenties and the twenty twos. That was ego lifting. Like I'm I'm admitting my own fault here. That was ego lifting. I should have dropped my ego and I should have dropped the weight back then. But for a while, I was lifting like 20 kg, like one handed 20 kg dumbbells. When we see a beginner using good form with appropriate weight, I'm not only happy to see it and I feel safe next to you and safe for you, I feel proud. I feel so proud that you've got the knowledge to be, you know, not ego lifting that I'm, I'm happy to see it. The only time someone's going to be like laughing at you and thinking in their heads, oh, what is he doing? Is when we see someone with shitty form. And that is open for any person of any size, because I'll be thinking that about meathead motherfucker, like who's juicing. But if he's got shitty form and he's doing reps that are like half a second, I'm still going to be thinking that. Most beginners don't really realize how important the right weight is. Here's the hierarchy, right? Form is number one. Form is absolutely the most important thing. Let me briefly explain why, because with good form is how that muscle that you want to hit actually gets hit. So form, weight, ego. Ego should be the lowest thing that you bring into the gym, that you lift in the gym. Honestly, ego should be lower than the weight you use. And the weight you use should be low enough that your form is at least, I'd say, 90 to 95% perfect. It's a weird way of saying it, but that just generally means like no swaying, no movements. Training, exercise, all forms, there should be some form of pain. 
it doesn't sound too good to say that, but there should be like some kind of pain that you experience as advanced and as beginners. But you should generally always have that in the muscle, like the area that you're currently training with that exercise. So for example, if you're training chest, and you get kind of like a soreness, a burn after, you know, 10 reps of like dumbbell press, that's a good sign. But after doing like 10 reps, if your shoulder is burning, that's, it's not very, very worrying because obviously your shoulder does get used in that movement, but it, it is clear to me that that would be not perfect form. If you're getting pain elsewhere, that's the time to really be critical of your form. And in general, that's another great tip. Be critical of yourself. In in the whole world of sort of exercise and gym, the the main part of it is essentially having weaknesses that you just slowly bring up and up and up. But you'll only see these weaknesses by being critical of yourself, by being kind of kind of harsh on yourself. And that also a massive part of that comes from being critical of your form. And even this is a, an, a, a good tip for even advanced people. Start recording yourself. Check your um, check your form even years in. You might think your form's perfect. You'd be surprised when you view it from the side and from behind and you know you take like a little camera tripod or get a friend to record it. You, sometimes you might actually be surprised of like, oh, you've got butt wink as you squat. It's not a major problem, but maybe your squat will improve if you fix that. Or you, oh, your, elbow, well, your left elbow flares out an extra 10 degrees, but you didn't even realize. But if you had the camera set up perfectly, you'd be able to see it. So beginners and advanced gym goers, be critical of your form, record yourself as you do some some major exercises and show it some people. There's, there's free places on Facebook and Reddit. People will literally in the dozens come and rate your form for you. And that's quite helpful. Anytime, even me, I've been going to the gym for six years. Some of the exercises I've been doing from day one and I'll still record myself and upload it. To be critical, it's like you're putting yourself out there for people to be critical for you. And it kind of is a bit scary. But when someone comes back and tells me like, oh, what the fuck are you doing? Like, why are you squatting like that with your like leg flaring out? I don't know. Are we still recording? Cause this is a fucking long ass video right now. 28 minutes. I wonder how long this is going to be after I edit it all, but I'm almost done now. Okay, so quick, I'm going to end this off with a couple of random ones quick. So tracking progress is really important. The more consistent you can make progress, the happier you'll be in terms of your results. I can absolutely vouch for that. So to track your progress consistently, first of all, my fitness pal is absolutely key in this. There's other apps that people can use. Fuck them all off. Just use my fitness pal, the free version. Don't pay for it or anything. There's a part of this, so I'll... I'll have like my iPhone on my phone sort of recording on the side so you can see this where you can log your weight and with a picture which logs it for the date on my fitness pal which is this is a feature that I've literally been using for about four years consistently so but it's not like every day or anything but like consistently I'll weigh myself in the morning take a picture um and then log it into my fitness pal because it keeps it all in one place and the fact that it's kept it all in there for like four years has been such a good um view of my progress that i can just go back to and just scroll through and just see the different pictures at different time zones at different um points of my life and points of my training so i can compare three months ago and i can also compare like three years ago which is massive weighing yourself right this should be a video by itself and I probably will do one because I feel like you watching this right now, I'm going to be personal like you who is watching this, you weigh yourself wrong. Every single person watching this right now weighs their, themselves wrong. I'd say 99% of people who step on a scale weigh themselves wrong. Now, I, I want to emphasize this, but I can't like, I'll, it'll be a whole video. The way to weigh yourself correctly, it needs to be as consistent as possible so that any weight fluctuations the scale says is purely body mass changes, right? Now, when someone, uh, this stuff, it needs to be a whole video because the average person has no fucking clue whatsoever how to do this. And it's not your fault, but it's just, it's quite a tricky thing. Now, since I've been doing this for years, it's, I've kind of got used to it where it's a weird one where I'm saying to weigh yourself, but then I'm also going to tell you to n pretty much never really take the what the scale says to account. Now the scale doesn't say your weight as you believe it does. The scale says your weight, your mass right now, the second that you stepped onto the scale, right? 
look, just bear with me. The point to weigh yourself is to weigh yourself pretty much every single morning after going to the toilet, literally emptying out as much as possible, literally, being naked, not even holding your phone, being literally fully naked, weighing yourself, seeing what the weight says, moving the scale slightly, weighing yourself again, seeing what the scale says, moving the weight scale slightly. Do this like five times, like step on the scale five times, and then that's the real number. The majority of people, like they're weighing themselves, you know, they'll tell me like, oh, they gained four pounds, but you like, you just wait, it's like 8 p.m., it's almost nighttime, you just weighed yourself whilst wearing clothes and holding your phone. Like that is not your weight, that is, the weight that the scale has registered that was on top of it, but that isn't your weight. You, you, an iPhone is 100 grams. I've already weighed this out, right? 100 grams is 0 0.22 pounds. So just by holding your phone, the scale will say 0 0.22 pounds heavier. It, obviously, it's not huge, but you, you do see like 0 0.2 as a difference, like significant difference. Just by taking a couple, like, a couple sips of water in the morning, your, the scale will say higher. If you weigh yourself, past about an hour of waking up, it's pretty much worthless in my opinion. But when you wake up in the morning, don't like down some water. I know a lot of fitness YouTubers say that, but you down, you drink this water to hydrate after you've weighed yourself. That's really important. So you wake up, you're dehydrated, you go to the toilet, number one, number two, fully undressed, don't even hold your phone, don't hold anything, step on the weight, see what it says, then step off, move the scale slightly because the position of the scale on your floor can also change it. I've got, so my normal weight right now is roughly 170 pounds. Sometimes I'll move the scale by like an inch and it'll tell me like 120 pounds. Like obviously that floor is like uneven, but it's went down by like 20, 30 pounds sometimes. Like that's how easy it is for it to fuck up. Weighing yourself is a whole tricky thing, so please don't get disheartened if you see the weight scale go up. There's a random gym tips. I feel like a couple of these, a bunch of people could actually benefit from, so I wanted to like share this round. And literally in the last like five gym sessions that I've had, I've literally just been like writing these down and thinking about them because I wanted to share this quite a while. I feel like these little things are quite easy to pick up on and they're kind of fun to implement, like the, the earphones and the... Um, playlist and stuff like that so all right so this video is really long but i'm probably just gonna edit it down but sweet okay if you like videos like this click on the little subscribe button and then also click on the bell and then you'll get a little message from me and you'll get a little dm from me that says like i've uploaded a new video i've been watching some guides on like how to grow your youtube channel and there's like a YouTube algorithm. So if you watch this far to like make the the YouTube system happy and promote my account, you have to like, like the video and comment and shit. So I'm gonna be the dickhead who fucking, oh, make sure you smash that like button. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe. You know the drill, fuck off. <laughs> Can't believe I just said that shit. Make sure you like, comment and subscribe, guys. Uh. All right, here's my little view right now, in case anyone cares. Yeah, yeah. All right, peace out.